Well, this is a different location. Hello everybody, it's Katie here. And for the first time in God knows how many years, I'm filming in front of my bookshelves. Because despite being on booktube for five years now, I have never once done a bookshelf tour. So I never film in front of my bookshelves anymore. As you can probably tell throughout watching just this little intro bit, the light in this room changes every five seconds. So let me tell you a bit about where I have my bookshelves. So basically in our house we have this tiny room that I'm in. When we first moved in we realised it was probably more of a storage room because it was too small to fit a bed into it. So we kind of just used it as a storage room for the first few years that we were here. And then in my final year of high school I kind of turned it into a little study room for myself. It was where I did all of my revision. And then when I started my book blog this is where I started doing all of my blogging. And then the more books I got due to my blog, the more I realised I needed a bookshelf. And when that eventually happened, it ended up in this room because it just made sense. But like I said, the, the room is tiny. So the only place for the bookshelves to go was directly by the window that you can see here. And because of that window, the light in this room is terrible. I love the window, it makes the room very bright because the room is tiny but the window is huge. Personally, I love the look of this room but the lighting. As we've already established, I am a very broke booktuber. You don't get high production values with me. I have the most basic camera and no lights. That, that's it, I don't have any extra lighting or anything. So I have to make do with what natural light I have. And unless it's cloudy-ish but not too cloudy that it's dark, that's the only semi-decent lighting that I have in this room. When it's sunny and the sun comes and goes between the houses back there and between clouds, the light in this room just changes far too much and, and it's irritating. So when I started booktube and I was filming videos in front of my original shelf, half of the video would be in complete darkness and then you'd have this bright window in the corner. <laughs> I do have another small set of shelves over in the corner here which I'll show you later and for a while I filmed in front of that because the light wasn't too bad at first but the more videos I filmed there the more problems I discovered. If I was filming at certain times the way the light would come in it would just reflect off my glasses and I literally ended up looking like the typical anime character with glasses whose eyes are just shining white. So yeah it, it just never worked. I gave up on the idea and went back to the original room that I filmed videos in but the one problem with that is that you never get to see my shelves. Of course being a booktuber my bookshelves are a big part of my life. So I should say that my shelves are quite a mess in terms of the shelves themselves. I don't have a billy. Yeah, the staple of every booktuber's background. My shelves are all secondhand, as is the life of a broke 20 something trying to make her way in the world. So yeah, my shelves don't match and they never have done. <laughs> Considering you've never really seen my shelves, why don't I just give you a brief history of my shelves. It all started back in 2014 when my first bookshelf was actually an antique cabinet. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, it wasn't actually a bookshelf at all. It was an old cabinet that we had in the house that my parents didn't want to use anymore. Me and my dad did a little DIY project on it and removed the glass doors and turned it into something that resembled a shelf. And I used that for quite a while, but then eventually I got more books and needed more space. My parents had another kind of cabinet set of shelves that they didn't want anymore. So I brought it up here painted it white and that was my first real bookshelf. I love those shelves, I still have them, they're the ones in the corner. But then of course I got more into blogging and more into booktube and I got more books and I needed more space but I couldn't afford to buy new shelves. So one day I was in my local furniture charity shop and they had these shelves over here, they were falling apart so the shop was selling them for £10 so I realised they were the only ones I could afford so I picked them up, I had some white paint at home left over from the other shelves and I painted them white. I had to do some work on the back of them so that they were secure but I ended up with nice functioning white shelves and then last year my, my books were out of control, I had piles at the side of my bookshelves. <laughs> then my mum found these shelves 
These ones here, in a charity shop. They were already white, so they didn't need painting. The shop was selling them really cheap because they wanted to get rid of them. They, they, they looked a bit of a mess, to be fair, but that, that's never an obstacle for me. So I ended up bringing this baby home. The, the problem with that <laughs> was that it completely didn't match my other shelves. These ones are wider. They have more depth to them, so the joint here in the shelves completely mismatched, and it's also smaller. There's this big massive space that really shows you how mismatched these shelves are. So they are my completely mismatched shelves. They're definitely not your typical booktube aesthetic. They're my secondhand babies, but I love them anyway. So yeah, since I've been here for five years, I thought it was about time I finally showed you the ins and outs of my book collection. I'm not going to go through each book I have individually. What I'm going to do is just give you an overview of each shelf and then highlight the books that I love. Yeah, I just, I think that works better. Also, I don't really have any specific order to my shelves. I have tried. I did it once by genre and didn't really like it. And then I did it by colour. <laughs> yeah, I had rainbow shelves at one point, but yeah, I got tired of that really quickly, so that's not happening again. So without further ado, let's get into the shelves. So here is a quick overview of the shelves and what they actually look like all together. And then there's my little extra shelf over there. So yeah, this shelf is extremely tall. So I have a chair that I'm gonna have to stand on because I am tiny. So let's pray that I don't fall and die. Here's my um, hanging plant that I love very much but it's probably going to get in the way. So on top of my shelves, I don't really have much because I know I'm gonna have to put books there eventually. So I just have some green tea bottles with Big Bang members on. So it starts over here. We have the first of many vintage cameras that you're going to see on my shelves because I love photography and I collect vintage cameras. So this shelf is kind of, um, jumbled. It's kind of just a collection of books that I didn't really have other places for, so I just put them up here in colour blocks. And it starts over here with two copies of a very special book. This is a book that contains my own short stories. I took part in a writing course a few years ago and at the end of it they published our short stories in an anthology. And that is that anthology, so it stays on my shelf. <laughs> and then over here I just have some red and pink books. And then over here I just have some fantasy books in their own little black colour block, which goes into orange and yellow. And I have another Big Bang bottle with G-Dragon on, because it wouldn't be my shelves if it didn't have K-pop related things on it. And then we go into more colourish blocks. We have some random grey and white books there, and then a little Christmas selection, and quite luckily they're all greeny bluish, so they all fit well here. And then I have my original copy of The Fault in Our Stars, which you can't really see on the camera, but it is completely battered. And a little Anubis, because I love ancient Egyptian history. So yeah, you'll see a few little Egyptian things dotted around as well. So down on this shelf, if we look past the ivy, I have my Polaroid over there. And behind that we have one of my favourite sections. This is my tiny baby sci-fi section. I don't really read that much sci-fi, or at least I didn't until about a year ago. So it's it's relatively small, but I love the books that are here. I have the Next Together duology by Lauren James, which is a brilliant duology if you haven't read that by the way. And then I have two of Becky Chambers' books from my friend Jasmine. I expect a lot of books from her on here because she is a bookseller and she always recommends me fantastic books, so yeah. <laughs> and then obviously I have BB-8 because no sci-fi collection is complete without some Star Wars things. And then this section here is kind of just crime, thriller, creepy type books. <laughs> and then over here I just have a really small collection of circus books. I do love circus books, I just don't have physical copies of a lot of them. I do have another green tea bottle. <laughs> with Chris Wu on it this time. This one actually does have a purpose. I keep copper in here because, you know, I need every penny. So this is one of my personal favourite shelves. This is the LGBTQ plus section of my shelf. I do have a lot more books 
that are LGBT that aren't in this section. I just wanted to make a little section with some of my favourite ones in this area. So over here we have my Read Proud watercolour bookmark that I made a few years ago for Pride. And then of course I have a little rainbow selection of books. I have my Noah books over here. And you know I recommend them all the time, I love those books. And then I have Simon's other book there as well, which is another gem. I have I Was Born For This up here with Simon Verses as well. They're two of my favourite contemporaries. And then I have my little pan badge. And then over here we have Vanilla by Billy Merrill. This book focuses on asexuality, so it's one that I recommend a lot. And then over here we have The Art of Being Normal by Lisa Williamson, which I have another copy of over there, but this was my first copy of. And this one is also signed as well because I got to meet her and I, I treasure that book so much. And then I have Red, White and Royal Blue, which is obviously another one of my favourites. We've got George over here, which is such an important book. More happy than not, girl love girl. And then we have the first of quite a few copies of Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. So this is kind of where it moves away from the LGBT stuff because I have my copies of Fangirl over here. But to separate them, I have this little Fangirl cup. I got this from Macmillan when I ended up one of the Rainbow Rowell fan club members. So then here we have my fangirls. This one is my original copy. This one is signed from When I Met Rainbow. Then I found this one in a charity shop and I've been after this edition for years. So I was made up to finally find it. And then I have my absolute favorite, which is the pink hardback edition. This was a Christmas present from Jasmine. And I can't thank her enough for this because believe me, I've been wanting this book since I first read Fangirl. It's so pretty and it has all the art inside. And then over here I just have one of my favourite bookmarks and I have the To All The Boys trilogy over there as well. I also have the little Baz magnetic bookmark over here and just a BT21 hanger with gin. So onto this shelf now and this section is kind of just Books with important messages, really. This is where my copy of Thug sits. There's a few that deal with racism. There's one that deals with self-harm. A few that deal with the issue of rape. So these are the type of books that I love reviewing on my blog because they have a lot of important subject matters that we don't discuss enough in books. So I'm really proud of this section. Over here we have a little fake plant because none of my real plants would survive in this area. Over here I just have a small kind of history section. They're all books that deal with historical matters and I'm sorry if you can't see the spines very well because the light's shining on them. So I have The Book Thief and Chinese Cinderella which was one of my favourite books when I was in school. Margaret and Me which is a book that jumps between present day and the past and then I have my two copies of Between Shades of Grey by Ruta Sepetis and then Out of the Easy by her as well. And then we have another vintage camera! That's a big surprise. This is my favourite vintage camera. This is my Canon one and it's one that I can still shoot on when I get film. And so over here I just have a quick little fantasy section. I have some great UK YA fantasy books here. Then I have Children of Blood and Bone and the rest of us just live here which I actually haven't read yet. I need to read. So yeah I didn't really have another place for them so they kind of just exist there. And then I have a book candle. This is for The Lie Tree by Frances Hardinge. So this shelf down here is kind of just some YA contemporary books. So over here I have a little pot that has all of my book related badges in. I do have a lot of pins on my denim jackets but a lot of these ones are paper ones so they get damaged when I go out in the rain. Probably can't see it very well but this has some water damage on it. So a lot of my treasured book pins are now kept in here just so I can protect them. I have this one from when I went to Maggie's signing. I have a rune in there. So yeah that's just my little book badge collection. And then over here I have all About Mia by Lisa Williamson. I have the hardback copy of this and it's actually signed but I found it in a charity shop. This was 50p I think it was. When I got it home I realised it was signed so yeah that's one of my best charity shop finds of all time because Lisa Williamson is one of my favourite UK authors so yeah very happy with that. And then yeah I just have a lot of YA contemporaries that I loved when I was in my YA contemporary phase. Honestly, when I was about 18, 19, I lived off of these books. I have a lot of Sarah Deeson books hanging around that 
literally defined my teen years. Then over here I have my yellow and green colour block with some more YA contemporaries. I have Eleanor and Park, the paperback copy of All About Mia, Lisa's latest book which I adored. And then we have some blue and orange ones. I have my Jandy Nelson books on this shelf. They are also signed and I absolutely adore these books because of the art and the poetry that they have in them. Ta-da! So down here I just kind of have a pile of some more YA contemporaries I didn't really have a place for. And these are a lot of the books that I used to read when I was in my teen years and adored. So I have some more Sarah Deesons. I just thought they kind of match down here next to my little pink locker that I have. I've had this since I was in high school when I was obsessed with Sharpay's pink locker. So I got my own. I also have a giraffe statue because I love giraffes, so yeah. So over here we have this little set of shelves. Um, when I was a teenager, before I had the cabinet that I turned into a makeshift shelf, I had this little thing. My parents picked it up from a car boot sale to put like CDs and stuff on and it was originally like a light brown colour but eventually they had no use for it so I ended up painting it white but once I got these shelves I decided to add this to the bottom so that I could stack up more books because I definitely need the space. So over here we just have some books that I don't really have a place for. I have Cursed Child which is a cursed book and then this lot of books here are just books that I really need to read. They're mostly ones that I plan on reviewing on my blog in the future so I keep them here to remind me of them. And then down here I just have some more proof copies and shocking to absolutely no one I have another vintage camera. Oh god I have to get back on the chair for bookshelf number two. Yay! Get ready for me to die. Here I go. So on the top of my shelf I just have my boxes for my Funko Pops. Then a birthday card that I got from my sister last year. I have my graduation pictures hidden back there. You, you can see they're a top priority in my life. So yeah, down onto this shelf, which is one of my favourite shelves. This is a shelf where I keep some of my hardback fantasies that are too big for any of the other shelves. I have a little easel with NCT on that I got from the concert in London. More K-pop things. So yeah, back here I just have some thick books. I have my hardback copy of Starborn, which is very aesthetically pleasing. And then over here, one of my favourite books on my shelf. It's my hardback copy of Uprooted by Naomi Novik. It faces outwards and I know that means I have less space for books, but there's no way that I'm not going to display this beautiful baby. So yeah, it's staying facing outwards. <laughs> then I have the cool prints and then some more fantasy books, except for Turtles All The Way Down. That's not fantasy, but it is here because I don't have another place for it and it kind of matches the aesthetic, so it stays. More Egyptian trinkets. And then over here I have my Funko of Tariel from The Hobbit, another vintage camera, and then just some fantasy paperbacks and a bookmark for the cool prints as well. And then a little candle holder because I love candles. So this is my more special shelf, I think because this is kind of like my personal favourite section. A lot of these books I discovered through Tumblr when I first started getting into book fandoms on there. So yeah, these books mean a lot to me. <laughs> so the little trinkets that I have on here, I have my Inej card and my Wylan card, which is of course mixed with Kue. I love these cards so much. I got them from the Worlds Collide tour that Lee did with Rainbow a couple of years ago, which I have a little badge for there. So yeah, these cards are my babies. And then I have Bitty and Lardo from Check Please, which is the first book on this shelf. There is a funny story behind this. So my friend Jasmine and I both love Check Please a whole lot, but we didn't have a physical copy of the comic. <laughs> so for Christmas in 2018, we both ended up getting each other the same present. And it was Check Please. So yeah, one of our finest moments, I think. So now I have a physical copy and it has Pride Place on the shelf. And then I have Pumpkin Heads as well. So I have my little graphic novels together there. And then I have Aristotle and Dante, Gentleman's Guide. Then this hardback copy of The Fault in Our Stars. So my local library had a book sale a few months ago where they were selling off some of their books for 20 pence and I found this there and considering, oh god, I've knocked the badges. 
Considering my original copy of it is completely battered, I decided to pick this up and then I saw the little signed copy sticker on it. So yeah, this is signed and my library decided to sell it for 20 pence. Definitely one of my bookish highlights. Yeah. So over here I have Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom and they're mismatched in size, which I hate more than anything. I'd love to have any of the more fancy editions of these, I really would. But for now, these two will do. And then over here I have my babies. These are the All For The Game books. I know I've mentioned these quite a lot in my videos, but I completely adore these books. Originally I only read them through the ebooks that were on Amazon, but then Jasmine got me the first one as a present for my birthday a couple of years ago, and then I made my sister read them, which was a feat I've been trying to achieve for a long time. And um, when she read The Foxhole Court and she completely fell in love with the story, she decided to buy me the next two as a gift for introducing them into her life. So yeah, I have all three of them now, and I love them very much. And then I have my Sphinx. I got this when I was about 10, I think. So basically when I was in primary school, that's when I started learning about Egyptian history and I completely fell in love with it. So whilst all of the young girls in my class were asking for dolls and stuff, I asked for an Egyptian Sphinx. So yeah, my parents got me this and it's super heavy and super pretty and I still keep it on my shelf because I love it a lot. Over here I have my little copy of Howl's Moving Castle. This is one of my favourite stories of all time, both the novel version and the Studio Ghibli film. Howl is one of the best book boys and I love him. So yeah, my copy is quite old. It's, I don't know when it was published, but yeah, it's probably older than me. That's the only copy I have. I don't have the new edition from when it was republished, but I'd like to own it eventually. And then I have the newer version of Carry On with the beautiful cover, which I love very much. Look at them. Look at them. Then I have my little Raven Cycle section and I have Call Down the Hawk up there as well. These books are very battered because they've been read by me, my mum and my sister and I think a couple of them were from charity shops as well. So they are very, very loved. I have little Paper Kiki and then my ultimate baby my copy of Carry On, my original copy. It's signed from When I Met Rainbow. This is literally one of my favorite books on my shelf. I just, I adore it so damn much. And then I have my copy of Wayward Son. Then I have a little badge of Yori. This is basically my little manga shelf. So whilst I was having a massive reading slump last year, the only thing that I was actively enjoying picking up was manga. And there was a store that opened up recently in my town that's like a gaming store, but they sell secondhand manga there as well. So the manga is really cheap. So for the first time I was able to actually buy some physical copies and they ended up here. I don't have enough of them to fill a whole shelf. So down here, I kind of just have some YA fairy tale retelling fantasy type stories. I also have Sailor Haru from free. And then I have my little Todoroki pop figure. Then I have the book of Your Name, which is one of my all time favorite movies. My best friend Rachel got me the book version for my birthday last year. And I just love this book so much. It's so pretty. So yeah, that's staying facing out. And then over here, I have my very small serif collection that I hope to grow with my Sarah Funko Pops. Down here I have the first two editions of My Hero Academia. Then I have my L pop figure. There's so many pop figures on this shelf. I have the little manga of Hell's Moving Castle. This was something that I got from a charity shop as well, so I was very happy with that. Then I have Given. I, I don't really enjoy boys love manga. In general, they just don't gel well with me but Given has such an incredible story and the anime is gorgeous so yeah that's one of the few boys loves that I actually recommend. Then I have the first manga in Banana Fish. 
first one of Haikyuu. I have three of Death Note over here. They were all collected from charity shops as well. And then the only one that I have a kind of bigger collection of is Bungo Stray Dogs, which is my absolute favourite manga. There's my little Chuya figure as well. So yeah, this is a shelf that I love very much. So moving down to this shelf, and this is one of my absolute favourite shelves that I have. It's my classic shelf. Prepare yourselves for a lot of E.M. Forster. So of course I have another vintage camera. I can't really have a vintage shelf without a vintage camera, so yeah, this one's here. I have my little orange penguin classics over here. I have a couple of Forsters in this collection. I have some Wordsworth and Frank as well and then a Charlotte Bronte. I have my box from my Virginia Woolf mug there as well. And then I just have some more classics over here. I have my pretty edition of Howard's End. It's in a box. It was from an antique store. It's... I can't get it out, oh my god. It has all this pretty patterning on it and it has some illustrations in there as well. I have a biography of Virginia Woolf. I have this pretty copy of Dorian Gray, which I managed to get from a charity shop. This pretty copy of The Great Gatsby, which I also managed to get from a charity shop. Morris by E.M. Forster. This was from a vintage bookshop in a town near me. I have some more Forster. Just, yeah, lots of vintage books that I love very much. Another vintage camera! I, I know I said the Canon was my favourite vintage camera, but you know, maybe this one's tied with it because this is my really old Kodak one that came with its box. My prized possession on this shelf is my Virginia Woolf book. This is a very old copy of Night and Day, so it's in some protective casing. I can't remember the exact year of publication, but yeah, it's one that's from the Hogarth Press, which was obviously the publishing company that she set up with her husband. And then over here I just have a bookmark that I got from the bookshop that I got this book from. I also just have some old pictures dotted around on the shelf. So yeah, I love this shelf very much. So down here at the bottom, on top of my storage box, I have some non-fiction books. I have YouTuber books over here. I don't really follow many YouTubers anymore, but Dan and Phil always have a special place in my heart, so yeah. And yeah, this just goes into some more non-fiction-y pieces. And then another vintage camera! This is a Polaroid! So then over here, sitting appropriately by the Totoro plushie, I have my Studio Ghibli art books. So this one for The Wind Rises, which is one of my favourite Studio Ghibli films. I managed to win this book on eBay for super cheap because the um, spine is discoloured from sun damage, but that does not bother me at all because these books are normally super expensive. And then I have the one for Spirited Away, which my best friend Rachel got me as a Christmas present, and th this book is just so pretty. So over here, th there is a little story behind my Harry Potter section. Basically, I have another shelf for this set of shelves, but I don't have any of the little pins to keep the shelf in at the moment. I need to get the right size ones. So right now, I don't have that extra shelf. M my plans for that extra shelf was to make a Harry Potter shelf, but until I can get the pins to put that in, I have the Harry Potter pile instead. <laughs> so I have some better condition ones and then some really faded ones. Basically my original copies of the books are a complete mess. My paperback ones aren't here because they are just so battered but my hardback ones as you can see they are very faded because I've had them for a long time. So my plan is to rebuy them in better condition. So I've been finding nicer ones in charity shops and buying them for cheap and the plan is to collect them up in hardback so I can have a nice display but obviously if I'm looking for them secondhand it's going to take a while so yeah as of right now I just have this random pile of Harry Potter books and then I have my Draco and Harry Funkos I have Hufflepuff cap my Hufflepuff badge because I have to have Hufflepuff bride and then I have a light up Hogwarts, which I didn't put on. And there we go, it's all pretty and lit up now. And then I have Time Turner and a little wand that's, it's not really one of the fancy wands, but you know, it's good enough for me. So yeah, Harry Potter section. 
Then down here at the side of my shelf, I just have a photo book for NCT, which is one of my favorite K-pop groups. And this book is huge and very heavy. So yeah, it's just kind of at the side because there's not really a place I can put it in the shelves. I also have my Cruel Prince bag from the Holly Black event that I went to a couple of years ago. And it just sits by my shelf because, you know, it kind of goes. And then there's me. Hello me. Hi. So this was the original shelf that I used to film in front of. It started off over in that corner. Eventually I moved it to this corner because I can't really line it up with these shelves over here. So I will give you a quick tour of these ones. So over here on the wall, I kind of have a few little bookish posters because when I used to film here, I didn't want like a white wall in the background. This shelf is kind of just a collection of things. So there's a lot more stuff on top of this shelf compared to the other ones. I have a signed bookmark of the Duff from Cody Kablinga. I have my watercolor painting of a giraffe that I did a few years ago and then more Egyptian things. So the first shelf on here is my Cassandra Clare shelf. It contains all of my Mortal Instruments things, except for the pop figure. This is Demon U from Seraph of the End. And considering I had so many pop figures on the manga shelf, I just thought I'd put him here instead. So yeah, he doesn't really go, but he likes it here. He's happy, so yeah. Up here I have my little clockwork angel, and I have a little rune key ring as well. Down here I have my bronze award for volunteering for five years with Oxfam. So that gets pride of place on the shelf. I also have a little Parabatai badge down there. And up here I have my little Stella from when the movie came out. So I've had that a long time. So yeah, I have the new additions with the pretty spines of the Mortal Instruments because, you know, this series means a lot to me. And these spines are pretty, so I wanted them. And then I don't have all three of the Infernal Devices one yet. I want them, but I'm collecting them up from charity shops. This was from one of my local charity shops for 50p. So I've started with this one and I'm hoping I'll find the other two. Because it's not vital that I have them, I don't need them, I've got the original copies. But I'd like them because they're pretty. Then over here I have the Illustrated Guide which is super beautiful because I love Cassandra Jean's art. Down here I have my original copies of the Infernal Devices. I have the Red Scrolls of Magic over here, Tales from Shadowhunter Academy, Bane Chronicles, and then my original copies of the Mall Instruments. Then over here I have the Course of True Love and First Dates, the little physical copy of that. And then I have <laughs> the movie edition of City of Bones. And the only reason I've got this is because I went to the signing with Cassie and Jamie. So this one is signed by both of them. So yeah, even though the movie was the movie, I kind of have to keep that book because I do treasure it. I have the Shadowhunters Codex there. So yeah, these ones don't match because my copy of Lady Midnight is actually an arc that I got before it's published. And then I have my original copies of these three, which are of course longer than those. So they're all in a pile there. And then I have this Magnus bookmark, which I love very much. It was painted for me by a pen pal that I have from Canada. And we both love Shadowhunters, so she made me this and I cherish it. It's adorable. So the shelf down here with another vintage camera is basically just more YA fantasy and dystopia books. This is where I have the Hunger Games. I have some more Meg Habot books. I have this version of The Mediator, which was one of my favorite series when I was younger. This is also where I keep my Percy Jackson books as well, along with the little bookmark that I made for myself. This is also where I keep Falcon. Hello Falcon, I love you. And so down here on the last shelf, again, this is kind of just a random collection of things. I have a 17 poster that I have no space for. I have a Supernatural book, which is huge. Harry Potter character guide. I have my Hufflepuff edition of Harry Potter. My coloring edition of Carry On. And then just some more random books. Some hardbacks down there and some ARC copies and then this is the pot that I keep all of my bookmarks in and the rest of my check please badges. So yeah, this is 
full of bookmarks that I've collected over the years and a couple of my own that I've painted. Then I have what might be the final vintage camera on my shelves. So I have this here with my Gallagher Girl series. They sit on this Harry Potter box. And this is a box that I made myself from a box that I got Harry Potter pajamas in. So yeah, things don't go to waste in this house. I also have a little carry-on postcard, some little bookish things. That's RJ. And then over here I have the character art for Dane from Cruel Prince. And then just a couple of K-pop things that I don't have places for yet. So yeah. This is the last shelf. So what I will quickly do is show you some other places where I have books dotted around because I tend to have books all over the place. Yeah. So I also do have a few books that I keep on a shelf above my desk. I have a couple of biographies for some of my favourite people. I have a room with a view up here and also the sun and her flowers. Another vintage camera that you can't see very well because of the light. I have a few bookish things on my little wireboard as well. I have badges and key rings and cards. So yeah, this is my desk, which is home to my beloved Monstera plant, which is my baby. But this isn't a desk tour, so we will move on. To down here, where I have a few art books. I have some art books here. This one being my absolute favourite because it's art from the Bloomsbury group and I love the artists and writers in the Bloomsbury group. Just a photography book, a little garden illustration book, and then another little Monet book down there. That's kind of the last of the books that I have in this room. So here's the final place where I keep some of my books. I mostly use this desk for painting, but I've got some books dotted around it as well. This is an antique writing desk and I'd wanted one of these for ages. And then I finally found one in a charity shop and it was falling apart, so they sold it really cheap. I got it and did it up. I covered up all the damaged parts. I've got some of it back there in the little cubby holes as well. Over here I have my Nano book, which I use every year for NaNoWriMo. Then I have a few watercolour guide books, which don't help me get any better at watercolour, but it makes me feel better to have them there. And then I've got a hand lettering book as well, because I love doing hand lettering. I love doing all these things, doesn't mean I'm any good at them. <laughs> and then over here I just have a few classics that I didn't have room for on my shelf upstairs, so... I thought they fitted in quite well here. I've got Emma and Persuasion by Jane Austen and then I've got To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf and The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. So yeah, these are my babies, my bookshelves. I hope you enjoyed getting to have a look around them, finally. One of my aims for the future of this channel is to try and film a few more videos in front of my shelves if I can manage the light situation. So I hoped you liked having a look around. I apologise if you couldn't really see anything clearly. This was my first try. Let's just give me a round of applause for giving it a good go. Also, please tell me how you arrange your books. Do you have some sort of plan? Because I'm always looking for ideas. So talk to me about all the bookshelf things down in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time. Bye!